My name is Dr Paul Mason, I'm a sports and exercise medicine physician and today I'd like to take you all on a journey exploring the science that underpins low carbohydrate diets. So to begin our journey I'd like to introduce you to one of my patients. Now this is the kind of patient that as a doctor I love. She was very, very compliant. So she first came to my clinic with joint pain and she was overweight and it was very clear to both of us that if she could lose some weight, that would help her condition. So we had a conversation and started talking about her existing attempts to lose weight. And it seemed that she had a very conventional approach, the kind that's recommended by most doctors, eat low fat. So let's hear her recount this in her own words. And I was doing all a low fat. You would have seen my fridge was just full of low fat cheese. No oil touched any fry pan in my kitchen. All the meat was as lean as you could possibly get, and I ate salads and I was starving all the time. And were you exercising? Oh, madly, six days a week. And I was doing those classes. I was doing back to back classes, so an hour hit classes followed by a pump class, and six days a week. So, and then I felt really guilty on the seventh day because I wasn't exercising. So, she was following the conventional advice. She was slavishly following that advice. She was exercising, she was eating low fat, but the trouble is it was not working. At the time she saw me, she was 30 kilograms overweight and gaining. So when I'm faced with this scenario as a doctor, I have to ask myself, who is responsible? Who is to blame? So the patients following the medical advice that they've been given so is it the patient or is it the doctor or the medical professional who gave the advice? So I would argue the blame should actually lie with the doctor or the health professional. Because the implication of the advice is that if you fail to lose weight, you're lazy and you're greedy. You're just not trying hard enough. But this very premise overlooks the key essence to understanding weight loss, and that's hormones. The conventional calories in, calories out hypothesis ignores the effect of hormones, very, a very strong science. So, We've got a lady here, she's 35 years old, and she's got a problem with a hormone called cortisol, and she's just been gaining weight. And this is what happens when her hormone problem was treated. She didn't get given advice to exercise more, she didn't get told to eat less. We fix the hormone problem, and the weight problem goes away. This boy here, three years old, he weighs 42 kilograms, and he's got a problem with a hormone called leptin. Seven years old, he now weighs 10 kilograms lighter and a very healthy weight. See what happens when you fix the hormone problem? Now, the most common hormone in the population that causes obesity is not one of those. It's called insulin. And this lady has a problem with insulin, but she's got a unique problem. She's got a tumour in her pancreas that secretes insulin and pumps it into her circulation. In this picture, she's 107 kilograms and she's only 152 centimetres tall. So she had an operation to remove the tumour which lowered the insulin levels in her body. Now, these photos were taken 50 days apart. Her weight dropped to 89 kilograms. She lost 18 kilograms. And if we have a look at a graph of her weight loss, you can see that in a 10-day period, she lost 14 kilograms. So clearly there's a problem here with insulin. It makes you fat. Now, this patient also had a problem with insulin. This was one of my patients. You can see her here, 46 years old and a size 20. 
This is what happened when we fixed her insulin problem. She lost 40 kilograms, and here she's about a size eight. The big difference is she didn't have surgery to fix her insulin problem. We changed her diet. So you're probably asking, how on God's green earth can a diet lead to such dramatic changes in your insulin level that you'll lose that much weight? So let's have a look. This is a graph here. And the height of the lines there represents how much insulin your body's releasing. And each of those individual lines represents one of the three main sources of energy in our diet, carbohydrates, protein, or fat. So let's have a look at carbohydrate. Let's see what happens when you eat carbohydrate to your insulin levels. This is called the area under the curve. You get a massive and prolonged release of insulin for over two hours. Let's have a look when you have the same amount of energy contained within protein, much less. And the surprising thing for many people, fat is even less. So think about that for a moment. High levels of insulin are associated with obesity and carbohydrates are the most potent stimulus we have for our bodies to release insulin. So in order for us to lose weight, we need to control our insulin level, ergo we need to control our carbohydrate intake. Now, we can broadly classify diets into one of two groups. On the left here, we have what's called low-carbohydrate diets. And on the right, we have low-fat diets, which tend to be high in carbohydrate because the energy has to come from somewhere. So let's have a look, an unbiased look at the evidence, comparing these two types of diets in terms of weight loss. Between 2003 and 2018, there were 62 published randomised control trials comparing low-carbohydrate diets less than 130 grams a day to low-fat diets in terms of weight loss. 31 of these studies had statistically significant findings. What that means is that the results were not likely due to chance. You could probably trust them. So what I've done here is I've graphed these 31 studies that had statistically significant findings no cherry picking here at all, and I've compared the average weight loss on the both diets. The low carbohydrate diet is depicted in blue, and the low fat diet is depicted in red. And you'll note that in every single one of these studies that we've got here, the low carbohydrate diet led to more weight loss than a low fat diet. Whatever happened to my perfect patient? You know, the one who was slavishly following the low-fat exercise advice before she thawed me, was 30 kilograms overweight. Well, we had a discussion. She cut the carbs out of her diet and she increased the fat. And by doing that, she fixed her insulin problem. And then this happened. At last count, three years later, She's maintained a loss of 36 kilograms and she lost 28 centimetres off her waist. And these are her actual photos. You are not to blame for being overweight if you've been following bad advice. Critical. 